Alrighty, and hello everybody, and welcome back to another fig review. Oh my gosh, I have both the Junko and the I wedding dress for you scales. Originally, she was gonna come out first, and I was gonna come out second, but they thought it'd be a really funny, silly joke to have them both release at the same time. And you know what? Part of me like is like, oh, that's really cute because they go together. They're like a common pairing. But the other part of me is like, two expensive scales in the same month. <laughs> However, y'all know I love Zombie Land, so we're gonna put these two together. It just it's 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 the right thing to do. You gotta have the two Zombie Land girls together. So, we're gonna start with Junko, then we'll do I. And just as like a little quick teaser here before I do go into Junko, my next video oh, is gonna be the Kakaguri figure for Mary Satome. I, it looks really nice, it's a Methos figure. I'm, I'm excited, but either way, look forward to that. But God was not playing around. I complained too much and then he decided to send me three of the expensive figures at once. All right, but a quick spin around of Junko's box. Now, it's not the nicest that I've seen, but it gets the job done. Of course, you've got the actual like photos of the figure on the side. It's simple, it's white. There's lots of little ornate details, all the logos, etc. It's a huge box though. However, she is a huge figure. So what are you gonna say? And there is the top window. I do think the top looks the nicest because it has all of the like kind of cute designs. Hopefully you can see that. It's not off camera. I can't see what I'm doing. This is the bottom. Nothing of no, noteworthy. God, the whole house freaking falls and shakes. Here, I'll show the inside sleeve for you here as best as I can. Ooh, wow. Look at that. So pretty. It's got these nice little side designs. Like it's like all the curtains and stuff. It's a it's a cute wedding design with like the marbling and stuff. You guys get an idea of what this is, the packaging. It's big. She's got a back tray as well for her extra bits and her plate. Boom. Number one thingy to do. She got her big old plate. I'm gonna be honest, this ain't anything to write home about. It's plastic plate. There could have definitely been like something on the ridge here or just like something nicer than just plain white plastic. Okay, and these, we might have to touch back on these later. Uh, there are instructions as well, but these are like little support rests for her skirt. Um, we'll see how those attach later. All right, now we do need to take her out. Okay, there's some little squishy doodah foam to protect her dress. And she has got a lot of protective stuff here. So obviously some more bubble wrap and foam. One on the front, something on the back, some more foam on the back, a bubble wrap, plastic tray that protected both her skirt and her feet, little poly things on her hair, both of her ponytails. I don't like that these are taped. There was no reason to tape them. Her hair is kind of, it's thin and sensitive, so it is a little bit concerning. Try to pull those off. She also has nuggets on the ends of her ponytails. <laughs> There's still more. Something in between her arm and her skirt. And she has a couple pieces protecting her skirt from her skirt. So a lot of protection on this figure. We do need to get her attached to her base here. A lot of this pretty easy. As per usual, if you got a figure, there are little studs at the bottom. You're gonna slide into your big old plate here. Then on the plate, you can see there is like, see that? See that? Like it's highlighting. There's little thingy thing. Those are where you stick them. So that's how you know where it's supposed to line up with the dress. One of them is like a semicircle and one of them is a circle. The one that's the semicircle goes on the semicircle pot spot on the plate and then the circle goes on the circle. I don't like that. I'm going to be real with you. Be real. I would have rather just had the dress attached to the base and having her feet float up. You know, it could have been better. 
This is a weird assembly for this, for a not that great base. But let's go ahead and take a look at her at least. Hopefully she'll do okay. She's kind of weighted. However, as much as I don't like the base, I do like the dress. The dress is so beautiful. It's, I mean, it's a pretty simple design for a wedding dress, but it is Junko and that is very fitting for her. She would have just a big ruffly white dress with like pearlescent colors, no extra bows or ribbons or like some weird modern flower design like I has. So this is very fitting for Junko and her character. Let's actually look at her up close. So because I can't personally move her very much. I will be using the zoom and hopefully nothing looks weird. Apologies in advance. All right, so first we're gonna get up real close to her face here. Not only are the eyes glossy, so they pick up their own just natural light, but there is the like artificial quote unquote glares that you would see in the anime. It just makes their eyes look so expressive. I think it looks fantastic. It makes them look like they're alive, which, you know, questionable, but hey. But I really, really love how her eyes look. I also love the expression on this for Junko. Junko's a very, she's typically one of the more mature characters in the show and kind of just more like reserve maturity, but she still has like this cute, like soft, happy expression. Not so crazy or out of the box for her where it feels out of character. It's like literally just the right amount of smile and like just that nice little, I guess, simplicity for like how her expression is. I, I hope that makes sense, but I like they didn't do too much. Her eyes are very soft. It feels very gentle for Junko, who is a very gentle girl. So I really like that. She's got blushing on and around her eyes and also on her cheeks and also in a little bit around her mouth, not like a whole lot. You can even see a little bit since we're already kind of zoomed in at this point, there is a lot of really nice, lovely shading on her collarbone and in her neck here. Her hair is really, really beautiful. We'll look at like the big long swoops in a second too, but just at her chunk of the top part of her weird ponytail mullet, she has a lot of really nice like light blue gray shading in all the darkest parts. And of course, like a light white blue gray highlighting everything. Again, for Junko, having her look very soft in nature plays off really well. So I like this a lot. Her hair is also just like bouncing with her general movement. So it's very expressive with her kind of like falling backwards it's very, very cute. I especially love these curls here and how they flow together. The big long ponytails. And I think in the pictures, I thought it looked a little bit silly with these ribbons, but I like them a lot more in person. But I think here they look cute. They look like they're actually flowing with her hair versus in the pictures it looked very mechanical, but very cute how they kind of like twist and turn back and forth together here. And then down into the end of her ponytail. And there is shading on the actual twin tails too. It does get darker when you get down to the end here. So her big ponytails are super long. You can see a whole lot of hair here and a whole lot of ribbon. Again, I, I like these ribbons more than I did in the pictures. I don't know if they just made them a little bit more natural or if they melted on the way here. And I think here they really look like they're loose and they're flowing with her movements and they're bouncing with her weird, weirdly strung hair, you know, like her big long back antennas. And I think with how they have like that blue pearl paint, it just shines really nicely in the light and just again, kind of separates itself from the hair a little bit more than it did in the initial pictures. Plus the blue and the gray just look really nice together, especially because she does have all this blue gray shading down in the depths of her hair too. I, it just, it looks really good. Her top, I actually really like the paint on this quite a bit. She has, it's again that pearl paint. It's almost like translucent with how they created it, but not quite. It is translucent on her arms. You can actually see a little bit of her arm 
peeking through there. So that is cool how they kind of sculpted it over her actual arm. The top itself and the gloves, while they still use some of the same pearl colors that you see on these translucent parts, it becomes fully opaque. It just kind of has that illusion. I probably could see where they maybe could have used a little bit more details on these frills here. I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just that is actually a small gripe. And I like that there is lining for like the actual bodice part here. You can see it's certain lighting, but there is some all the way around to the back even. And then leads to her cute little bow in the back. Like how cute is that? Little tiny baby bow in the back. The chest and the arms and her head are just really well done, especially with how small they are compared to the dress. I think it goes together very well. Moving on, the big old boofy skirt. It's big, it's boofy, big old boofy skirt. I mean, this is seriously just white ruffled skirt lots of layers but they do flow together really well it's there's no difference in the painting or the painting types or like the different fabrics because if this was again a real wedding dress this is exactly what it would look like it would all be the same color same fabric everything it would just be huge and big and massive i don't quite love the fact that she has red heels. I do think they're really cute red heels. I don't want that to be misinterpreted. I think these are very cute little designed shoes, especially with like the little red ribbon on them as well. And it does add a nice little bit of extra flavor for Junko, so to speak. But it does just, again, out of everything we looked at, it feels so separated. I really... I actually was gonna pass on this figure originally, and I'm not gonna lie, these shoes were a pretty high contender for it. Junko also just not being my number one girl, but then the fact that like this design suddenly feels unrealized because of these shoes. I don't know, maybe that's just me again, but hey, I gotta say what I, how I feel. I'm telling you how I feel, that's why you're here. She does have little pink sh highlighted sh uh, little toesies though. She got that manicure. It's her wedding day, she wanna have her shoes, her toesies be painted. Now the skirt underneath, you can see there's more fabric underneath here actually. There is more layering underneath, but I like that the inside wasn't forgotten. Sometimes that happens for figures. Once you get underneath, you look and you go, oh, they didn't care about this as much as the uh, rest of the figure. Now, of course, it's, one, it's not gonna be my figure review if we don't also observe the bottom. It's kind of hard not to also. You guys, they gave her like plain white panties. Does she do got a little booty bump? She kind of flat though. But come on, like I just, look, 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 look. Look how pretty and beautiful this figure is. Look how absolutely gorgeous stunning it is. I don't need her to wear garters. I don't need her to have some crazy, you know, cheetah print undies or something. All I'm asking for is like just a bow. What if she had red panties on underneath this? Do you know how much better this figure would have been if you flipped up underneath and the red on her shoes matched her red underwear? I swear to God, guys, I, and you're going to have it where it you can literally, without even having to pick her up, be able to see under her skirt. Just anything, anything. I just, anyways, this this rant is not gonna end. Spoiler alert. She is actually absolutely gorgeous, stunning icon the moment, but we have another girl to check out to make this video extra super long because I hate myself. So we'll do the outside look of Eyes Box. It's same as Junko's, honestly, there's really not much going on. She does have a slight blue hue to all of like her curtains and veils and like the little accent marks for like the little wedding design. And here is the top of her box. Hopefully you can see most of that there. And the bottom for fun. Now again, so you can get a look at the inside here, guys. It's basically the same as Junko's, but hers has a blue hint to it. It's got the marble floor and the blue on the sides. I think the inside sleeve is pretty cute. Again, it's not like the most spectacular, wow, amazing thing I've seen. Let's cut her open. Again, same thing. We got the big boy and then the tray in the back. 
we got the white tray, nothing special. And then she also has her own dress support beads. All right, guys, and we are once again working with a lot of packaging here. So she's got lots of protective foamies, a whole layer of protection on the back, and literally just some slapped on for funsies, it looks like. She had the one on the front. Bubble wrap covered plastic dress form thingy. She has some bubble wrap on the front, some foam over here. Oh, and she also has one on the inside there. Alrighty guys, so here is I though. She is of course also very, very cute. I'm excited to look at her. I like her overall design much more. It feels way more cohesive than Junko's. It's, it's a lot better because it's all just blue with some other little accents, like small accent colors and some of the glitter that they use, which we'll take a look at more. But I, I just kind of like this design more. It's a little bit more unique, a little bit more interesting. But let's look at her closer. All right, so first, similar to Junko here, we are gonna look at her face. I, of course, again, similar to Junko, love how they do the eyes on these figures. They have these bright shines on them, as well as like just from the natural light and from the artificial light. Overall, her face is, it, it's just as nice. I think it is like where her face is still softer for eye. It is more expressive than Junko's where she's a little bit more easily excitable. And I think they did a good job of translating that to her as well. Now her hair, she's got just, you know, cute short hair, but what I love most about her hair, obviously eye has her classic like dark, blue hair and all of her little flowers in there. I love that her hair is highlighted. One, at the bottom where it's kind of getting thinner, but two, they used a pink instead of like a light blue. So it's kind of turning into this lilac purple. And then in some of the corners you can see in particular the pink pop out. What I love about this the most, one, it ties in with the color on her eyes. And then two, there is some pink sparkle in some parts of the dress, which we'll see a little bit later. So very, very cute. I like that she has all of her little classic daisies in her hair. I do wish that there was just a little, oh, little touch of yellow on each of them. It would have been really cute to just kind of add a little bit more to this. The back of her head with her veil as well, which I really like that the white flowers that they used are not only at the top, we saw it a little bit earlier, but then two spread out into her veil, which is really cute. More of that light shading here. And they did highlight on like the typical highlights and then use like a darker, deeper blue at the bottom of her hair. So I think that looks really good. Her hair also, again, very well sculpted with the shape. And I like too, you can see it because you don't really think about it when you see Ai's hair. Oh, I love, like I just love like the little strands. They did a good, a really good job sculpting the hair. It's so good. But I like with this figures, you can kind of see the shape of Ai's hair a little bit more where she does have it significantly longer and thicker in the front and shorter in the back. Again, a lot of times you can't really see that. Of course, the veil is slightly translucent. It's not fully, but you can of course see that my hand is going in and out behind it. Dark blue on the top, like a almost clear blue at the bottom. Very nice. Now it is a little bit, it looks a little bit scuffed. One of my biggest gripes with transparent plastic is that it tends to hold on to textures really well. You can kind of see it here. And I'm sure if I flip it up a little bit, you can see it a little bit on the bottom. It's just not very smooth, mostly because of how it's made. Um, but it, it does look a little bit, it makes it look dirty, which kind of stinks. And then moving on, so we have her chest. I really like the top of her dress as well. Not quite as exciting as Junko's was, but there's still a lot that I really like. So first off, she has this cute little flower pearl necklace that has like a nice little shine to it. And I like too that there's like the flowers in the front and then there's flowers that kind of go to the back as well and then just go back to the pearls. This is another one of those pieces where I'm like, okay, you maybe could have done like blue here and then white on the pearls, but it's small, so it's a little gripe. I like that with this 
part in particular where it's like the darker blue, it looked sheer with how they colored it because you can see that on the lighter parts where maybe like the thinner parts where there's not as much like gathered fabric you can see the color of her skin through the, the actual fabric itself and then of course as you get closer to these like scrunched up areas it gets darker and there is a lot of detail to the actual like wrinkling of the fabric so it just definitely pulls off the sheer illusion that they were going for especially even when you get onto the back once again, the actual light blue bodice, very well done. There's all the little like lining and all the different parts where it's like sewed together or maybe if there was actual like wire or bone. I love on the front with all this crisscross pattern, they did a really good job of highlighting it as well as just like adding the actual shape of her body underneath of it too. So I like it a lot. What can I say? That part's done nicely. Now you can see her actual hands. We don't have gloves on and there is some pink dusting for blushing on the ends of and tips of her fingers. She does also have do -do 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 -do, manicured nails. So her skirt, she has this big, huge, blue, slightly clear skirt. Hi, Erza. You like I? You wanna give a kiss? Please don't leave me. Please, on my wedding day. <laughs> yeah, anyways, anyways. This big, huge, translucent skirt. It's got these really deep blues up at the top here. And as you get down, it gets thinner and uh, you can see all the fabric underneath. And I do like in the actual folded parts where it gets a little bit more gathered, it does get a darker blue as well. It's, you may have noticed a lot of the little glitter pieces kind of reflecting back. I'll zoom in a little bit on some of it here. This is where I was saying where they did do like a little bit of a pink on the skirt. I think that's a great way to tie it together without it being super duper obvious. Also, something really cool, you can see the the white part of like the petticoat skirt underneath and how all the fabric gathers like it's very clear where it's like ruffled and sewn together here on the front the fabric is gathered super well like look at all those bends and folds here it's so nice you can see she's got like the roses peeking out underneath now um there is a little bit of shading like the inside of the rose has like a lighter navy blue and the outside is like a darker navy blue. The light blue ones don't really have much shading if I'm gonna be honest. I think the actual layering of the fabric is more of the appeal here versus like how it was done so to speak. So I still think it was done really well because you can see where all the stuff is layered for like even the white fabric in these corners and then there's this clear pearl blue fabric that trails down a little bit. Now, maybe the roses should have gone to here. I don't know, just thought. And her shoes. I like her shoes, because guess what? They match her outfit. It's crazy how that works. There's a cute little blue rose on top to match the blue roses up here. This light blue <laughs> rings that she has. I do think those are a little bit weird, but whatever, it's idol stuff. This blue here kind of matches the blue in her bodice and some of the other blues. It's just, it's in the same color family at least. And there is a little bit of shading on the bottom. It gets darker down here and lighter up top. So I think that's pretty cute. Those are cute shoes. What can I say? The, this stand isn't as atrocious as Junko's was. It is still pretty big. Uh, been, it's like, you know, a necessary evil. But again, Junko's were like not clear. They were the same color as the ugly plate and they were huge. A continued saga where her panties are also plain white. Again, guys, I don't want much. Make them blue for crying out loud. Alrighty, and hey guys, so this is something I realized I forgot and I always forget, but measuring them, these are a little bit more unique, so I need to measure them. So we're gonna start with Junko here. Her base, the diameter here, I'd probably say is just over nine inches, just over. She herself, she is just a little bit over nine inches as well. So across the base nine, up and down is nine. Eyes base is the same. And her height, she's a little bit taller. I am starting from the table to the top of their head. So this includes the little like centimeter 
of the base, but she is, I'd probably say 10 and a half. Anyways, so you know. But here we are at the end with both of them together. Unfortunately, they're too big where I can't have them spinning in the background like normal. They, I can't, I wanna have them both on display because this was a double feature. I like so much about these figures and obviously I know I had some gripes. These bases, let's be honest, they're kind of atrocious. Like the focus is yes, the figure. However, having literally just boring plastic white plates it they're these are ugly the support beams also not fantastic and also don't really do that much i would have much rather had it where for example again junko could have probably been attached to the base in the back versus the front her skirt's big enough and low enough to the ground this could have very easily been the the base of the structure you know white panties i'm sorry you guys i know i gripe on this on all the figures however it's just because of figures like these when i get them and i just kind of get so disappointed because you'll spend money on these figures these really nice figures and they'll have details in these hidden little corners and these hidden little pockets and they'll do all this really nice cute stuff and then like obviously you're not gonna be looking there that often but Junko is basically there, you know? It doesn't take much. To just not put any detail is weird. I don't know, maybe that's, maybe, again, maybe this is just me, but it does feel like you have this almost finished figure and then they just phoned it on the last part. I, it, I, don't, I don't get it. I really, I really truly don't. And then, you know, some things I think could have had a little bit more detail maybe like her flowers. And this is just more with the original design. They probably aren't gonna really stray that far from the design. Her red shoes are really still a little bit much for me. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. You're supposed to try and match your accessories when you can. You know, we're not really doing a whole lot of that. Those are the gripes that I had. However, I had more wins than unwins uh, and that really um i'm i'm gonna harp on those gripes because i have been waiting for these figures for so long the, and i of course want nothing less than perfection but that doesn't exist so these are great the paint was fantastic the dresses were fantastic the colors that they chose to paint were great their eyes and their faces are perfect i didn't mention this but there's like light subtle pink inside of junko's hair on these edges as well, similar to how there was on Eye. Eye's is more like a baby pink, where Junko's is more like a salmon pink. Really great paint choices. Again, the dresses look fantastic. Those are just great. And it's Zombieland merch. And God, I, I gotta take what I can get. So there is more good than bad. It's just the bad does stand out quite a bit when you do look at the price tag. I am gonna post more figures of both of them on my Instagram, at Desunasis. I had the Sakura, both the Nen Nendo and a scale figure of them in like their idol uniform. You can also find me at all these other places. I do lots of other stuff. If you missed it recently, I was on Twitch a lot because I was doing a lot of art and I'm going to be playing Stray. I bought Stray, finally, I can play the cat game because I'm not busy anymore. So I will be playing that on Twitch too. Yeah, thank you guys so much if you watch it to the end. If you watch this whole video and you're like, dang, this was pretty good, you should follow me. I do try and post weekly, whether it be figure reviews or just other things that happen to come along like art or room updates because I, have been in the midst of redecorating my whole workroom. So, you know, there's lots of stuff. I know I'm rambling, but this is a pretty big video, so a couple extra seconds ain't gonna hurt, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great rest of your last week, and I hope you have a great rest of your next week, and I will see all of you guys later. Bye, 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 bye.